Welcome to the latest Small Gold podcast. This one's entitled Four Reasons Why Comex Won't Default. I have been hearing about an imminent Comex default for at least 10 years. And it hasn't happened, and there's a reason it hasn't happened, but yet the same tired old story keeps getting repeated. Imminent collapse, someone's going to stand for delivery, and it's going to be game over. And at that point, you won't be, the doors will be closed. You will not be able to buy gold or silver because the whole game is over and Comex will be exposed as a fraud. Well, that story is a fraud. Back in 2013, and you can check out the link here, we heard exactly that. Comex was at the end of its tether and the doors would be closing and the time to buy your gold and silver was now. Because if you didn't buy back in April 2013, the doors would have been closed and the price would have gone skyrocketing. It would have been an astronomical price increase because basically there'd be no way at all to buy gold. Now, the reasoning behind the story of a COMEX default imminent collapse is sound. I'm going to take you through why people who constantly repeat the story about an imminent collapse of COMEX make sense on the surface. They talk about how COMEX trades kind of on a fractional reserve basis. The amount of trading that gets done around a small pile of gold or silver is ridiculous. I agree with them. COMEX should have collapsed. COMEX is actually running on fumes and has been for years. But there's a reason for that. I'm going to take you through the four reasons why COMEX will not collapse. And they point to things like, you know, the, the amount of gold in the COMEX warehouses that's registered and available is at ridiculously low levels. Now, when I wrote this article, I think it was... Yeah, back in October 2015, the number of owners per ounce of gold, about 260. At one point earlier this year in 2016, the number went up to 512 or some ridiculous number. Silver is not as bad, but the amount of registered silver continues to fall. So you say to yourself, well, if this continues to happen, COMEX is going to collapse. It's, it's an imminent default ready, but it's never happened. And here's why, and I had to look into why this didn't happen. And the reason basically is, is that <laughs> they're trying to convince people, it's like trying to convince people that pro wrestling is fake. Now, when pro wrestling first came out, people thought it was real. And it took a while for people to realize, no, this is fake, fake, fake. Well, it's the same with, with Comex. The people that participate in COMEX know exactly what's going on. They're not there to buy gold and silver. They're there to get exposure to the price of gold and silver. They're not there to buy gold and to stand for delivery. But let me, let me take you through the four reasons why COMEX won't collapse. As I mentioned, COMEX is not a place to buy gold or silver. It's a paper market. I'm fond of saying COMEX is a place where traders trade gold and silver they don't have to other traders who don't want it. They're simply looking for price exposure. They're not looking for physical bullion. In fact, the silver bullion dealers that sell you silver, as they buy their silver and gold, they go on COMEX and they buy short contracts to hedge it. So they're actually participating in COMEX while selling you gold and silver. They're actually selling their inventory short. And they're not doing it for nefarious reasons. They're doing it because they need, if they buy silver at $20 an ounce and they hold that inventory and it goes down to 18, 17, 16, if they're not hedged, they're going to be selling every ounce to you at a loss. They can't charge you $20 an ounce if the price is 16. So they have to go on COMEX and short silver. But most COMEX contracts don't stand for delivery. They get rolled over or they expire by their terms because the people that are on COMEX aren't there, again, to buy gold or silver. There's plenty of places you can go and buy gold and silver. COMEX is not one of them. To give you a quick example, the Shanghai Gold Exchange is a place where you go and you pick, up, pick yourself up gold or silver. In 
2014, entire Comex Gold deliveries were just 85 tons. In one week in Shanghai, in two weeks, they can deliver 137 tons. They delivered 2,500 tons in 2015. It's a big difference between the mentality of a paper market and its participants and the mentality of a physically traded bullion market, which COMEX is not. Now, they do have physical delivery, but that's not the main reason that people are there. And most of the traders on COMEX are the people who all these smart commentaries say are manipulating the price. They're the large bullion banks. They're the ones, the commercial, they're the ones who are trading these paper contracts back and forth. Well, that should tell you they're not going to allow some kind of stand for delivery. They're going to do whatever they can to manipulate the market to make sure that their positions are protected and that COMEX is protected. But it gets better than that. Now, to trade contracts, I'm not going to go through this. You can read this at the blog post. Um, I'll put a link to it in the bottom of this video, why COMEX won't collapse, won't default. Uh, we go through the actual mechanics of trading the gold contracts and what's involved in the gold contracts, what's involved in the silver contracts. Now, the second reason, remember, we're doing this in order of increasing importance. The second reason is today traders in society accept fractional reserve everything. It's unfortunate, but that's been drilled into our heads and everyone goes along with it because just about everyone has a bank account and your money is not in that bank account. And if you take a look at this, it's a wonderful life um, video in the scene where George Bailey tries to convince everybody uh, to not ask for their money because frankly, the money's not there. <laughs> and they know it's not there. Their particular money is not there. And as George Bailey explains, it's been lent out. It's in someone else's house. It's in your neighbor's house. Now he's one of the good guys. But he's still trying to defend, to have faith in this fractional reserve system. You know, you're thinking of this place all wrong as if I had the money back in the safe. Yeah, that's what you should be thinking. But he's trying to explain to them that they're thinking wrong. And unfortunately, we have been told that that's wrong type of thinking, that fractional reserve is the way to go. It makes things work better. So if you go back to COMEX and you've got... 250 owners per ounce, 500 owners per ounce. You think, that's outrageous. That can't go on. Well, it's the same thing in your bank account, and it does go on. So once you get past the idea that there's not the amount of gold backing the contracts, there's not the amount of dollars backing your deposits, it doesn't matter whether it's 2 to 1, 10 to 1, 100 to 1. It really doesn't matter. There's not a point where you say, this is ridiculous. It's going to collapse because there's now 500 owners per ounce. And by the way, that number has gone down. If you look here, the registered gold owners per ounce once was over early this year, 500. It's now down to 31. So what? That's still a ridiculously high number, but it doesn't matter whether it's 31 or 500. The chance of COMEX defaulting because of that doesn't matter because once you get past and you assume that one to one is not required and 10 to one is okay then 100 to one is okay and as I mentioned there's a dollar shortage right now and it doesn't seem to matter if everyone wanted to, or not everyone just a small percentage of people wanted to go and take their money out of the bank even a solvent bank so to speak they couldn't get it there's not that much cash available and I have here, uh, back in September 2015, there was only um, $1.384 trillion of notes in circulation, and two-thirds of those were outside the United States. So there's only about $500 billion worth of Federal, you know, federal Reserve notes in the United States, and most people don't have them, don't want them, and use digital money. So there's no way, there is a dollar shortage, and it doesn't seem to matter. Now, we're getting to a more important reason. Number three, you don't beat the casino at the casino. Let that sink in because commodities, commodity exchanges, just like casinos, have rules in place to make sure that you don't win if you're trying to bring them down. So it doesn't matter. If you've got a scheme or someone who's going to stand for delivery or China or Russia, whoever it is, they're not going to be allowed 
to stand for delivery if there isn't the gold there. What happens? They're going to get shut down. The Hunt Brothers, if, if you guys know the lesson of the Hunt Brothers, and some people have tried to tell me that's irrelevant, that was 30 years ago. No, it's not. It shows you what COMEX will do. The Hunt Brothers, back in 1970s and early 1980, decided that their money was at risk because Nixon had taken, taken the United States off the gold standard. And, they, and, the, and the Hunt brothers had a lot of money in cash because they were oil men. They had a lot of money. They wanted to protect their money. So they bought silver. They couldn't buy gold because gold wasn't legal until the end of 1974 when Jerry Ford uh, reversed the executive order of Franklin Roosevelt in 1933 when Roosevelt confiscated, nationalized the gold and said, you can't own gold if you're an American citizen. So they started buying silver instead. Sorry for the aside. And they were buying silver anywhere they could. They had the money to do it. They wanted to transfer their dollar wealth into metal wealth. So what they did was they bought as much physical silver as they could, and they bought a lot of futures contracts on COMEX. Big mistake. And because they're financial geniuses and wizards, they thought they could buy some of that silver on margin. And, of course, they were also taking delivery out of the COMEX. What happened was the price rocketed from three, four, five, six dollars an ounce all the way up to fifty dollars an ounce because these two guys and a couple of their affiliates were buying basically all the gold. And we make this point even today that an annual silver production, the annual silver mining production can be bought for about twelve, fifteen billion dollars, which is not very much money in the grand scheme of things. But back then it was the same. These two guys were able to try to buy or were, would have been able to buy all the available silver in the world. They ran into COMEX. What COMEX did was, once it got to the point where it looked like they were going to be successful, COMEX shut down. They said, you know what? From now on, we're going to limit trading to liquidation orders only. Meaning, if you have a contract on, and you want to participate in COMEX, all you could do is sell silver. Now, what do you think happens when all you can do is sell silver to the market? The price goes down. Well, as the price went down, the margin that uh, the Hunt brothers held, the margin positions that they held on COMEX were worth less. So, therefore, their collateral was worth less. So, the Hunt brothers had to also sell silver on COMEX to meet their margin requirements. What does that do? It drives the price down even further. Well, that busted them. So the Hunt brothers were driven out of business because COMEX just changed the rules, limited trading to liquidation and to liquidation orders only. Now, what happened at the end of the uh, Hunt brothers fiasco? Did COMEX collapse? No, it just reopened later and the price of silver was lower. Price of silver didn't go higher because of this so-called default. It went lower and it stayed lower from 1980. It never went to $50 again until 2011. So there's an example where COMEX technically defaulted. They were basically, they changed the rules. And look what happened. Silver went down. So if there's ever a trader who's foolish enough to try this and stand for delivery when there's no silver to be stood for, they're going to shut them down. And the lesson again is you don't beat the casino at the casino. It's the same with, I use the example of Blackjack or 21. You can go in there and you can count cards. You can figure out how to beat the casino. If they find out that you're doing that, they will take you in the back room and chop your fingers off. And I have a link here to a scene in a Scorsese movie where they do just that. You don't beat the casino at the casino. In fact, they have rules against trying to knock down the casino and take it down. You guys can check out CME Rule 413. Comex is prepared for traders who may wish to beat the casino with even, either malicious or profitable intent. And this rule provides that the chief regulatory officer or his delegate, upon a good faith determination that there are substantial reasons to believe that immediate action is necessary to protect the best interests of the exchange, he may order that any party be denied access to or all CME group marks. They'll just toss you off the platform. You could say, I'm standing for delivery. And they're going to say, no, you're not, because you're not on the platform to stand for it. Two, they could be denied access to any Globex platform. 
They may be denied access to any other trading or clearing platform owned or controlled by the CMA group. They'll toss you off all your other positions that you may have across the platforms. And then you may be removed from any trading floor owned by the CMA group. So you try to pull the stunt when you're standing for delivery <laughs> because you're on principle or you just want to buy silver there and they don't have it. And that's going to cause harm to the, the COMEX and it's going to cause it to default. You're out of there. You're not going to get away with that. And that's what people don't understand. And that's not going to expose anything because they're going to make that person look out to be like they did the Hunt brothers. They're going to be a financial terrorist. There, there's going to be some story behind that person who tries to do that. They're not going to be looked at as some white hat person riding into COMEX to expose the fraud. No, they're going to be looked at as a manipulator who's in there trying to muck up the works and destroy the free market. I don't agree with that. It's not a free market, but the rest of the world doesn't care and they will be treated as if they were criminals. COMEX is prepared to shut down any trader, a group of traders, doesn't matter what their motive is, if they're going to engage in a series of trades that is not in the best interest of COMEX. So a trader standing for delivery could cause a default of COMEX, but they'll toss him from the system. And they'll screw up all of his other accounts that he has anywhere else. There's a rule that allows you to try to get back on. Well, by then it's over. You got 60 days. You're out. You can't be denied access for more than 60 days. So 60 days is an eternity. By then the whole market has changed. But let's say, number four, COMEX is a U.S. government protected exchange. Let's say you don't realize that this isn't the place to buy gold or silver. You don't realize this is a paper game. Let's say you don't realize and you don't accept that uh, fractional reserve anything. You bought a contract and you're going to stand for delivery. And let's say the rules somehow miss you and they don't realize, which would be highly unlikely, that somehow what you're doing is going to screw up the exchange and they don't toss you from the platform. It's not going to happen. The United States government will make sure, through the President's Group on Working on, working Group on Financial Markets, a plunge protection team, that COMEX isn't going anywhere. The working group of the plunge protection team is comprised of the Secretary of the Treasury, the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, the Chairman of the Securities Exchange Commission, the Chairman of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, all members who all these smart analysts say are part of a criminal conspiracy and part of a Ponzi scheme. Well, if they're part of a criminal conspiracy and they're part of a Ponzi scheme, what do you think they're going to do if they see COMEX is in trouble? Say, well, it's a fair thing to do. Let's give the guy his gold. Oh, we don't have it? Well, why don't we just admit we don't have it in default? That's ridiculous. If you believe, like many of these commentators do, that you can't trust these people, that these people are not working for the best interests of free markets, that these people manipulate markets, why do you think they're going to like allow when they have the power to stop it some kind of default? So in conclusion, it makes no sense whatsoever, other than it makes a lot of sense based on normal free markets and, rash and, and logic, that if there's not enough gold or silver that would lead to a default, that's not how the game is played, though. COMEX is not set up to be that way. So they're not going to allow COMEX to just default because somebody's standing for delivery. It's not as simple as that. Because if it was, it would have happened already. And we've seen, even if that did happen, they have ways to make sure that no one profits from that at all. So in closing, I, I just want to say, I've heard this story so many times. It's driving me nuts. And it seems to bring in new adherents all the time. And people forget that this claim has been made, that COMEX collapse is imminent for years. In fact, if you go to the bottom of the article, there is a video, and it only goes to 2014, but it starts in like 2000. And it shows headline after headline of all these commentators saying how COMEX is going to collapse, how to play a COMEX collapse, COMEX uh, default imminent, and so on. It hasn't happened, and it won't. And if you want more information, please take a look. The name of the article is Why COMEX Won't Default. And just in closing, it's not that I agree with any of this, that I, I'm endorsing what COMEX does or how it is. 
It's just I'm being realistic in looking at how it's set up. And all this fear-mongering or hype about COMEX, imminent collapse, that's all it is. You know, the story gets recycled every few months. New people see it. They get all excited. Maybe they subscribe to someone's newsletter. Maybe they buy some gold or silver. I don't know if that's the intention, but clearly these types of articles get so much attention and people eat this stuff up. And they're outraged by, it. oh, there's 500 owners per ounce. There's more, there's more people that want the gold than they could possibly deliver. Collapse is imminent. No, it's not imminent. It should be imminent, but it's not. Thanks again for listening.